Women have been involved in the aviation industry since the early days, from building aircrafts to flying commercial airplanes. The number of women is growing, but still, it's small in comparison. For example, only 7% of pilots are women. So Kristen and I spoke to Janine Yanarelli, who is the founder of Par Avion Limited, and she tells us how she got started in the aviation industry and how women can forge their own path as well. You're mm -hmm. female in the aviation industry for for many years. What is what is it like being in kind of this male dominated world? Huh. How did you even get into aviation? <laughs> uh, Let's start there, shall we? Uh, that's an easy story. So that was purely by accident. I was in the right place at the right time and uh, made a either really great or a really foolish decision. It turned out to be a really great decision. So pure accident, right place, right time. Mm. Mm. Is it different today than when you entered? Do you see more women in the industry or where is it? You definitely see more women than you did back in the day when I got into the industry. And uh, a lot more diversification in terms of the roles that the women fulfill as mm -hmm. opposed to when I entered into it coming straight out of a university environment. I felt like I was still in a huge learning curve. Mm -hmm. I was very, very lucky to have two great mentors, my first employer and then my second. And the second perhaps turned out to be the more important. And I can't stress enough the importance of having someone that you can turn to. Mm. But I went to work for two guys that absolutely did everything within their power to, pro to promote me, to educate yeah. me, and to help me find my footing within the industry. Mm. That's so good. We talk so much about the importance of STEM education, and especially for young girls, young women, to get in the fields of science and technology. From your perspective, why is this something we continue to need to push? Well, I think part of uh, studying the more difficult or perceived more difficult courses is a confidence builder. Besides providing for a great foundation no matter what you do in life, for young women to accomplish something that traditionally men pursued is an empowerment movement. And not just for that individual, but it sets them up as the role model for anyone else that they encounter. Mm. Any young woman who's listening today, yeah. do you have specific advice for them to maybe enter the industry? Uh, challenge yourself. Uh, and to enter into the aviation industry, certainly do a lot of reading, do a lot of research, because there are many different avenues which you can pursue and then um, get involved in some form or fashion. I mean, there are many organizations that have regional chapters, one of which is Women in Aviation. They'd be more than happy to embrace young women and show them a pathway to greatness. Well, when we think of aviation, we think of pilots, and but there's True. so much, obviously. It's not just flying planes or being on the plane. What other areas are there? Well, clearly I'm an example of the other area because I don't fly and I'm not an mm -hmm. engineer, though I have a very good cursory understanding of what it takes to do both. I'm on the marketing side, marketing and sales, and that's what I wanted to do. That's my forte. That's what I know that I'm good at. And I help those people who want to fly, who want mm -hmm. to work on airplanes, achieve their goals because you've got to sell the airplane first in order for them. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Can I ask them? It's like a nice segue into what's happening with the airline industries right now, kind of what we saw over the holidays. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Some of the mess from a marketing uh, perspective. Yeah, well. Where do you uh, think we are? <laughs> so they're kind of in restart mode because mm -hmm. they went into shutdown mode during the pandemic. And uh, taking so many aircraft out of service, furloughing so many people, it's not like mm -hmm. flip a switch, let's get started again. Though yeah. that started to occur back in 21. 22 was, you know, let's ramp it back up. But to bring those airplanes and bring the people back online takes a long lead time to do so. Mm -hmm. Now compound that problem with the fact that there were other underlying issues that they needed to deal with, everybody tabled something in pandemic. You either address something that got long put aside or you tabled it. Well, in the case of Southwest, it was probably overhaul of their software systems that manage their operations and uh, logistics management. But it's, mm -hmm. again, not something you fix overnight and you know perfect storm occurred over christmas yes. and we That's know true. that they're they're fixing it but as us as consumers as we're heading into another busy travel season mm -hmm. like what should we be paying attention to yeah so you know there's a few travel tips that i follow myself one of which is if you can fly direct to your destination I, by that i mean a non-stop flight mm -hmm. you are best off doing that if you are within, let's say, a couple hundred miles of your final destination, I would choose the nonstop flight, rent a car, and drive the rest of the way. 
you are more mm -hmm. apt to get to where you're going on that nonstop than you are on a connecting flight. Greater risk. Just look over the last summer, how many flights were canceled out of major hubs. So that's one thing that I would deal with. Mm -hmm. I'd certainly have contingency plans in place, and as we've all seen, buy the travel insurance. Oh, so many great tips there. Thank you so much. Uh, today is actually Janine's birthday, too, so I want to wish you a very happy birthday.